Chapter 2 The Bucket Dweller The frightened kitten did not stop to marvel at the incredible sights. Instead, Tiger ran along the edge of the building hoping she would not be seen. After turning a second corner, Tiger stopped to catch a breath. She was shocked to learn that Carrot, Pips and Socks had not followed her. She was totally alone in this strange new world. A sudden clattering came from another door as it swung open. A large form filled the doorway. With nowhere else to go, Tiger panicked and ran away from the old barn to the safest looking place. An old overturned metal bucket. She launched herself into its dark opening and was surprised to find herself sliding uncontrollably on a slimy surface. She came to a halt just before hitting the end and found herself sitting in a small pool of water. Almost all cats hate wet toes and Tiger was no exception. She instantly sprang high into the air then scrabbled away until she found a dry spot. The unexpected sound of laughter caused her to stop. Tiger was not alone. Something was hiding down in the dark end of the bucket. A feeling of dread crawled down her spine. Tiger crouched low and slowly backed away. Fear not, Purple, said a croaky voice. You are quite safe in here. A pair of strange eyes suddenly appeared in the darkness. Tiger continued to back away, believing she had run into a lair belonging to a beast of the wilds. She had no intention of becoming anyone's breakfast, regardless of how soothing their words. The mysterious eyes closed and disappeared. When they opened a moment later, they were much closer. Instead of fleeing in terror, Tiger relaxed. Her special cat eyes adjusted to the dark and saw a very strange creature shrouded by the gloom. It had an enormous mouth which was as wide as its head, but there were no teeth to be seen. Stranger still were the eyes located on the outside edge of the head, which seemed to be part of the body. The kitten thought this to be a very odd animal, and although she was not frightened, she lifted her tail and puffed out her fur to make herself look really big. Again, a gentle wheezy laughter came. The sound bounced off the metallic surface and created the illusion there were more creatures in the bucket. Before the sound of laughter completely died, a light buzzing noise appeared and whooshed and whirred around the kitten's head. As fast as lightning, but not as bright, something flew out of the creature's mouth and returned before Tiger knew what was happening. A sloppy munching, crunching and slurping sound started to echo about the bucket. We frogs only eat flies and bugs, said the frog. It took two tiny hops forward to enter the lighted area. Do you like flies? I've only had milk, said Tiger. She relaxed her spiky fur and sat facing the small furless green-skinned animal. Flies are all you'll get in my bucket. You might get lucky and munch the odd spider, but they're as cunning as they are wise. Why are they odd? asked Tiger, having no idea what kind of food a spider was and why it was so cunning. Well, they have eight legs for starters. The frog lifted each of his legs in turn and counted. One... Two, three, and the last makes four. Tiger copied, carefully raising one leg, counting, and then putting it down before moving on to the next. Four here too, Tiger announced. Her face then went through a number of strange expressions as she tried to imagine what it would be like if she had another four legs. I've got nowhere to put any more, she finally said. Four legs are all a body can cope with. You are wise beyond your weeks, furball, but you are wrong, incorrect, and somewhat mistaken, my new fluffy friend. Many small creatures have more than four legs. I think four is best, though. The frog then demonstrated how fast he could lift and drop each of his legs in turn. The sight caused Tiger to start giggling. Never had she seen such silliness. The frog's legs moved so fast and rhythmically, Tiger found herself unable to resist joining in. Despite her best efforts, Tiger's youthful legs could not approach the dazzling speed and rhythm of the frogs. The two little animals continued to dance and laugh. A wiggle and a jiggle was added to their performance here and there, while a croak, a meow and a ribbit spontaneously erupted from their mouths. Then all of a sudden, BANG! The pair found themselves crashing into the side of the bucket as it spun through the air. As they bounced around, 
grass and sky flew past the opening before the bucket landed with a dull thump and rolled to a stop. With a sore nose and an inside-out ear, Tiger slowly got to her feet and helped the frog roll off his back. Unlike herself, the little green creature seemed unable to flip himself over. In return, the frog used one of his exceedingly long-fingered hands to flick Tiger's flattened ear back to its proper place. Are you hurt? the frog asked. Tiger meowed meekly and gently rubbed the tip of her nose with a paw. The frog approached Tiger and gently stroked the kitten and said, It happens sometimes, he said. I normally hear them come in, but we were having so much fun at the time. I'm sorry. What happened? Tiger asked softly, appreciating the frog's soothing strokes. The slight stickiness of his fingers reminded her of Mother's raspy tongue when she bathed her brood. The scary two legs like to knock my home around. I hear their roars and heavy feet coming, and then bang. If I'm alert, I can leap out just before my home soars through the sky. Are they still out there? asked the frightened kitten, almost dreading the answer. The little frog raised a long, thin finger to his mouth, but he did not do the shh sound, but Tiger understood. After a few heartbeats where each sounded louder than the last, the frog visibly relaxed. They're going away. We're safe for now. I want to go home, Tiger said between sobs. I don't like being outside. It's too scary. The frog did not respond. His attention seemed to drift past Tiger to the opening. Tiger watched the frog's eyes. The dark orbs narrowed and became intense. Had he heard the monstrous two legs returning? Tiger's ears rotated back to listen. A faint drone could be heard over her shoulder and it was getting louder. Before she could turn around to see what was making the sound, an extremely long tongue lashed out of the frog's mouth and snapped back with an enormous blue bottle fly secured to the end. The trap fly made a valiant attempt to escape from the sticky tongue and flee the gaping maw, but it was all in vain. The frog squished and crunched his snack a few times, then politely asked, Want some? The frog fully opened his mouth, it was an impressive sight indeed, and the kitten thought she would be able to see all the way down into the creature's innards if she moved a little closer. Tiger resisted, but did examine the remains of the fly on display. Despite her tummy starting to feel the pangs of hunger again, these bits of fly were not something she wanted to eat. The kitten politely declined the offer. The frog continued his crunching and nodded sympathetically. I understand, he said through slapping chops. You want to go home. You're missing out, though. This is a particularly scrumptious specimen. After swallowing his catch, the frog hopped to the edge of the bucket. Tiger followed. Gone was the patchy grass and gravelly ground that Tiger ran over while fleeing the giant two legs that had startled her earlier. She now worried about the barn, or rather, the lack of it. The only thing she could see were tall grasses that reached for the sky. A small tear appeared in the corner of Tiger's eye as she looked out of the bucket in horror. The tear swelled until gravity took control and forced it to run down her nose. It splashed on the metal by her feet. Wait here, said the frog. Using his marvellously sticky feet, he climbed up the side of the bucket. I'll be right back. Tiger's eyes nearly popped out of her tiny face when she saw how effortlessly the frog scaled the smooth surface. He glanced back as he neared the top, then disappeared over the upper edge. Time passed, the frog remained absent, and the kitten started to worry. Today was the first time she had ever been alone, and she really did not like it. Relief and joy hit the kitten when the frog's upside-down head suddenly appeared at the top of the bucket. With a slow stretch, the frog reached down and down and down until he almost touched the bottom of the opening. His back legs were surprisingly long and spindly, thought Tiger, unlike his bulbous body. Just when it looked like the frog could not stretch any further and would snap in two, his back feet would release their grip and let him flop down. Then with a large hop, he joined Tiger. The frog put a gentle hand on the kitten's back. I can't see any barns from up there, he said. But there's a tree nearby. If you climb that, you should learn which way to go. Tiger considered this new information, 
Could she really climb a tree? She had heard about such things from some of the other farm cats as they lazily sat around in the barn, but to do it herself? Perhaps the frog would do it for her. Will you come with me? she asked nervously. I've only climbed one thing ever, and that was no more than the height of your home. The frog stared back at the kitten with unblinking eyes. Tiger could see fear written across his froggy face and down his sides, and she thought if she looked under his feet, it might have been there too. Her new friend was terrified at the thought of it. That much was clear. The two looked at each other for a long moment, and then a bit more. I can't, said the frog, breaking the silence. Birds will try to eat me, and the giant two legs. Well, it's best not to think about what they do. Tiger did not respond. A forlorn expression fell over her little face. Her head dropped. This is not my real home, continued the frog. I used to live in a splendid pond. Water stretched as far as the eye could see. Then one day... A great white bird swooped down and plucked me off my reed. There were tales of such things, of course, but no one believed them. For there I was, flying through the air with mere moments to live, when another one of these giant birds suddenly came crashing in and tried to snatch me away as they squabbled in the sky. The first let me go. I felt through the air, spinning end over end, until I crashed into a small bush. Tiger's eyes became intense as she was drawn into the frog's tail of terror. And, she asked excitedly, I hid under some leaves and waited until it was dark before coming out. I sought my pond for days, weeks, maybe even longer, but I could never find my way home. I lived under rocks most of the time, hiding during the day and only poking my head out at night. I ate ants, worms and other tiny things. That's how hungry I was. Worms and ants were not known to the little kitten, but she knew they must be absolutely ghastly by the way the frog screwed up his face. That was my life, said the frog with a shrug. At least until this hope came crashing by. I checked it out after the sun went down, and it has been my home ever since. Birds don't know I'm here, and delicious flies can't help but come in to investigate. I even get a yummy moth every now and then. Although terrified by the very thought of it, Tiger could see that she would have to brave the great journey to the tree on her own. Even though she was still a tiny kitten, she had heard enough stories to know cats hunt birds and not the other way around. She had even played with many a feather mother had brought back. Deep down, she knew it would not be right to ask the frog to accompany her if he was so scared of a menace from the skies, even if she was not. Which way is the tree? Tiger asked as she left the shelter of the bucket. The frog moved to the edge of the metal, raised an arm, then extended a long spindly finger to point the way. The two stood face to face for a few moments, each sad for the other and with eyes welling with tears. Tiger approached the frog and used her tiny nose to give the little chap a nose kiss right on the end of his nostrils. She would have preferred to use his nose as his proper, but he did not seem to have one. Then with a muted meow and a sad wave, the kitten trudged away with a downcast head. She glanced back to the frog. He looked tiny and vulnerable, standing all alone in his rusty bucket. With a wiggle from her stumpy tail, Tiger turned back to her path and started a new journey.